Hi, Bobcats. Welcome to Chem 1342. This is a challenging course that I hope you will find rewarding. Um, in this first welcome module, I'm going to walk you through how I expect you to do the course, uh, particularly now that we're largely in an online format. I'm sure that every course you're taking is going to be set up and structured differently. So I just wanted to take a little bit of time to explicitly show you how our course is going to work. Just like this welcome module is set up, you'll find that each chapter module is set up with a PowerPoint file and a list of objectives. And then the PowerPoint file will take you through all of those objectives. There are accompanying videos that I have recorded and posted on YouTube. And if you just work through the pages in the module, it'll take you through all of this step by step. For this welcome module, our objectives are listed here. It basically is to figure out how the course works and uh, to see how you're graded and to figure out a plan for success for this course. The modules on Canvas are where all of the material will be delivered for the course. It starts off with a resources module, and that resources module is where you'll find all sorts of stuff to help you with the course. Um, so, for instance, the very first page in the resources module will take you to reference material. You should investigate that page and see things like the official periodic table for the course. You can also get to the nuts and bolts of the, the course there with the course syllabus. Um, the syllabus is also available in the Canvas course tools. So if you click here on syllabus, you'll also be able to get to the syllabus. You'll also find practice exams under resources and then information about our Zoom class sessions, how to log in, and then the actual links for both office hours and our synchronous class meetings. One of the items available in the resources module is our course calendar. I flipped on over to February because uh, January doesn't have a test, so I couldn't show you all of the color coding. So here in February, we have three different color codes that are shown at the top. Purple means it's a synchronous class Zoom meeting. The coral color means that it is uh, that something is due, homework, participation problem sets, quizzes, that sort of thing. And then the blue days are when we have our exams. So the idea with this calendar is to show you where you should be at any given day. So for instance, this first week of February, you should be working on chapter 14, and it looks like we're doing chapter 14 uh, both the first week and the second second week. It's really important that you understand that when we're doing two weeks on a chapter, that means it takes two weeks to learn the material. Uh, chapter 14 is about kinetics, and it's something that you probably did not see in a high school chemistry class. A lot of the stuff that you did in General Chemistry 1 or Chem 1341 is covered at least to some extent in a high school chemistry class, but kinetics really isn't unless you took AP. So um, we're going to take two weeks on this topic since it's pretty much all brand new. So it's really, really critical that you get started on it right at the beginning. And so um, you need to, to space out your learning. Please do not wait until the day that all of this stuff is due there on February 12th. Um, you're not going to be able to digest it all in one day. So um, the purple dates are ones when we're going to have synchronous class meetings. So you'll notice those are Mondays and Wednesdays. We will have those at our scheduled time, 8 a.m and that'll be via Zoom. These synchronous class meetings are designed to be problem solving sessions like a flipped classroom. And I'm going to pick just a couple of items to go over. The things that I'll pick are things that 
students typically struggle with when we're covering this particular material. So the general topics for the days um, are indicated on the uh, calendar itself. And so my expectation is that you will have viewed the recorded videos or and or read the textbook up to this point. So on, for instance, Monday, February 1st, you should already know something about rates and rate laws, at least the introductory material. And I'll work on the during the synchronous class sec session on clearing up misconceptions and things that are common for that topic. The exams will run, let's see, the, the first exam, it'll cover chapters uh, 12, 13, 14, and 20. Um, and they, the exams are the blue days, so it'll run all day on February 18th, plus um, the exam will be um, it, it'll bleed over into the 19th up until 8 a.m. I expect that everyone will take the exam with examity. And so you have all day on the 18th and then up until 8 a.m. on the 19th. Now, every time I've given an exam with examity, there has been somebody who has run into some sort of a difficulty. For instance, last fall, I had a student who started to take the exam with Examity and didn't make it through the identification authentication process because she had only her ACC ID with her and it did not match the ID from her profile on Examity. So she was unable to take it. So some disaster like that has to strike in order for you to take it with me by Zoom proctoring starting at 8 a.m. on that Friday morning. Uh, that's the only way to deal with the test if you don't take it through Examity on Thursday or up until 8 a.m. on Friday. If disaster strikes, you need to email me as soon as possible and I will look at the recording from Examity to verify that you did try to take the test and some disaster struck. So you've got to email me and I've got to be expecting you that morning. We have multiple modes of delivering instruction in this course. The main mode of instructional delivery is recorded videos, recorded lectures that you will access through the various chapter modules on Canvas. So you'll go to a page in Canvas and several videos will be there on the page with a few words introducing the videos. Then you'll watch the videos. Um, there are some tremendous strengths to this approach. Uh, the, the videos are keyed to PowerPoint slides, and that PowerPoint will be in the first section of the module. And so as you are interacting with the video, you can use those PowerPoint slides. For instance, if you prefer paper copies, print them out ahead of time and take notes on them while you are going through the videos. If I'm working a problem, you should be working that problem along with me. If you think you know how to do it, pause the video, work it out, then play the video and see if you got it right. If you didn't get it right, make corrections. Uh, you have all of these wonderful strengths, like you can stop the video, you can back it up a little bit and replay something that didn't make sense. One of the things that I loved last summer when I had to do a bunch of training online was that I could control the playback speed. When somebody's talking in real time and they're saying something that you already know all about, unfortunately, there's not a fast forward button. Ha, huh, not so with these recorded videos. You can speed up the playback if you want. I found for material that I really was unfamiliar with in the, the trainings I did last summer, one and a half times was a pretty good playback speed for me for most um, of the training materials. And for stuff that I already knew, 
two times the playback speed was enough for just a quick refresher. Something else that I like to do, especially if I speed up the videos, is to show the captions. So whatever the person on the video is saying will appear as words down at the bottom of the screen. And really these asynchronous lectures that have been recorded that you can access through the Canvas modules are the way to go. We are also going to have synchronous uh, class meetings. These are going to be Zoom meetings at our scheduled class time, which for spring 2021 is 8 a.m. on Mondays and Wednesdays. The registrar also has us on Fridays, but I don't want to overload you all too much. You're already having to watch these asynchronous recorded videos. Um, I don't want to meet for, for too much time then with our synchronous um, class, class meetings. Um, the synchronous class um, class meetings are problem solving sessions. So as I mentioned on the previous slide where we were looking at the calendar, I'm not going to go over everything from the course. I'm only going to pick one or two things that tend to give students trouble. We'll try to straighten them out. I'm also going to be looking for active learning techniques as much as possible, such as using Google Jamboards when those are appropriate, or having you go into breakout rooms with students to solve some problem. And here's a really critical piece. These synchronous sessions assume that you have already done work with the recorded lectures. You've already interacted with them by taking notes and attempting problems. And one of the ways to think about this is that this is kind of like office hours. These are not the face-to-face -face lectures. The thing that is the face-to-face -face or the equivalent of the face-to-face -face lectures are um, these recorded lectures. Those are the equivalent of face-to-face -face lectures. Our synchronous class meetings are extra problem-solving sessions. They are not required. But boy, if you're not coming to these synchronous class sessions, you need to make really sure that you are keeping up with the class regularly. There is one other solid primary source of information for this uh, course, and that is the textbook. The textbook is integrated into our Sapling Learning um, homework platform and it's referred to as the Sapling IGC. IGC stands for Integrated General Chemistry. It has a lot of cool features like if it refers to some prerequisite knowledge, there will be a link. So you don't have to go searching for it. You just click the link and it'll take you back. So for instance, if we're doing something on kinetics and it references gas laws, you can just click there for a quick refresher on that topic from gas laws. So the ebook is either an alternative way for the primary delivery of instruction or it's complementary. But you should really think about the ebook as being a primary instructional delivery method.